You got time? Yeah, yeah, you guys learning some cool stuff? Um, anyone eager to take anything that they learned the past couple days and, you know, come Monday, integrate it into an application? Yeah. Anyone? Yeah? All right, who here has heard of Google? 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 Anyone? All right. Who here has heard of Firebase? Do we have any Firebase users in the crowd? All right, a couple. Any Angular Fire users? Awesome. Well, that's what I'm here to talk to you about. We're going to be changing a couple things on you. So, Angular Fire 2 uh, is the official library to add Firebase into Angular. <laughs> we get that a lot. <laughs> so, that's one of the things that we're looking into. I'll touch more on that later. There we go. So the first thing that you may notice is I am not David East. I think the beard gives it away. So David is actually now uh, front-end engineering, so he gets to go to less conferences, you know, travel a little bit less. His United counts, you know, he might lose status. So I have a confession. I'm not David East. And I'm also an Angular noob. So uh, I only made my first Angular app probably about two weeks ago to ramp up on Angular Fire. So I am really excited about the Angular world, though. There is some really exciting stuff coming up. I have a lot of experience with magical SDKs and magical lands where you know, things are hidden from you. One of the things I like to see in the new Angular is that, you know, it's less magical, uh, especially with Angular 4. The footprint size is getting much smaller with tree shaking. And I have a lot of experience with magic. If you've met me at any conferences in the past, this is my first Angular conference after all. Just came back from Embercom. And if you knew me before that, as a Rails developer. So Angular is pretty refreshing to me. I'm used to complexity being hidden way, way, way under the surface, and it takes years and years and years to gain experience necessary to increase performance of your application. It takes a senior, usually. So before I get into Angular, Fire, I will touch on what Firebase is for those of you that haven't heard about it. And yeah, we don't just make hot sauce, it's just our swag. So Firebase is Google's backend as a service. Um, we have basically, since Google I.O. of last, taken over pretty much all of Google's mobile SDKs and JavaScript SDKs. It's a unified platform with monolithic SDKs for iOS, Android, and the mobile web. And that's what I'm gonna be talking about here today. So the keystone of Firebase is its real-time database. I say real-time database because, well, it's real-time. What does that mean? So the real-time database, whenever you write to the database, which is just a JSON store, it will stream any writes to all connected clients within a matter of milliseconds. It changes how you write applications. No more you know, writing to a database and then having to query that database. When you query it, you're opening a persistent socket so the data will stream back to you. Sounds great for Angular, right? So what does that look like? So here I make a connection to the database under the foo ref. This is a plain old vanilla Firebase um, JavaScript SDK. So I'm then writing to that foo ref, and then I'm reading the value out and this is the thing, it's a persistent 
socket. So anytime that value changes, that callback's gonna get triggered. And callbacks, not very Angular-y. So, say we wanna do a collection. Okay, that's not advancing. There we go. So a collection very similar. So we write the ref, we then listen for child added, child changed, and removed. That simple, but again, not very Angular-ish. So, enter Angular Fire 2. So we switch things up a little bit by giving you Firebase object observables. These wrap our callbacks and promises. So here, we actually, you know, we pass Angular Fire to our constructor. And similarly, it's a little bit more of an Angularish API. We then listen to that, and it's an observable. That will get triggered any time there's an update to that. Similarly, lists, right? So we're listening to all comments, and then those will synchronize to that comments list observable. So it's observables all the way down. That list observable, each of those items inside of that are an observable. So this is one of the things about Firebase is whenever you're listening to something, any data that changes under that ref will stream to you. So it's a bit of a caveat when you're designing your schema. But it gives you superpowers. So that looks all fine and dandy. What's the problem? Why am I up here? Why am I telling you that we're breaking things on you? You know, aside from the naming. So yes, we can see that. Uh, so this is actually our source map, looking at it with Source Map Explorer. And in this application, I was only using authentication. So a good chunk of our package is going to the pieces that we're not actually using. So right now, and when we started the project, there was just the Firebase real-time database there was just authentication. Now, in the Firebase JavaScript SDK, there's also cloud storage and cloud messaging. Soon, we're probably gonna add another feature. And then after that, more features. At this rate, our package size is gonna be doubling every six to eight months. No good. So, ng modules to the rescue. So, I was playing around a little bit. So I made a proof of concept. It broke a lot of things, so we need to, you know, make a new version of thing uh, so you can upgrade. But with just that experiment, I was able to reduce package size by 30%, and I'm just talking about the Firebase part of it, which ended up being 48% of my vendor JSON. JavaScript. So, we can do this because the Firebase JavaScript SDK is already modular. So, when we compile, it'll tree shake, and those pieces will fall out. So, our proposal is to actually break things in here. Right now, it's just Angular Fire. It's monolithic. You get everything. So, breaking things up, and then, we can actually add wrappers for the new stuff that came in without increasing your package size if you're not using them. So this is what our proposal looks like. So you'll see that there's some red marks due to breakage. Uh, but if you are familiar with Angular Fire, there's a couple things that have changed here. Aside from the scoping, pulling in the different modules, you notice that we're no longer passing uh, authentication, default config, um, and a couple other little changes. So nothing major, it'll just you know, cause a little bit of disruption. But the benefit will be 
that your package size will be reduced and we can increase functionality. Basically, less is more, right? So, aside from ng module, we're taking a couple other steps to reduce the size and complexity. Uh, after taking a peek in Source Map Explorer, we found that 30% of our current SDK is just wrapping Firebase auth. And part of the problem is that Firebase auth is changing. So the JavaScript SDK changes, and we have to update Angular Fire. It's causing a lot of complexity. Different browsers behave in different ways. Really, we should be just focusing on the things that are unique about Angular and making a bridge to our existing JavaScript SDK and let all, however many engineers work on the JavaScript SDK, you know, work on that. So what we're proposing is actually just taking authentication and giving you an observable there. Another thing, a bunch of our complexity is the pre-configuration of login. This is where some of the churn comes in. So in Angular Fire, one of the things that you can do is you can pass to initialization your default sign-in method. And then from there, anytime you try to log in the user, that default will be presented unless you override it. Like I said, part of the problem is that's not strictly wrapping. We actually have to stay up to, eight, stay up to date with the Firebase SDK, add the pieces that they're doing. When they add a new authentication provider, we have to add that into ours, and lots of problems. Anywhere where we have something that you know, we're trying to add or trying to change the API, that's another point of failure for us. So if we reduce the package size, if we reduce the complexity, we can give you more Angular-specific behavior. So we're proposing to give you router guards, uh, lazy loading, and then universal support. So, and then, you know, since we're using ng module, since we're rewriting things a bit, cleaning things up, you'll get these virtually for free. And less maintenance for us. So, on to naming. That's, that's, that's the hard problem in computer science, right? We've been discussing this a lot. My favorite is Angular Fire 2. This is also Angular Fire. Angular Fire, we have to keep that around because it's very popular for Angular JS. Um, and just our naming kind of prohibits us. Some of the other options we're throwing around is, you know, making version 4 of Angular Fire 2, and then, you know, using package scopes under organizations. So another benefit to you if you're a Firebase user and Angular Fire is now you can dramatically reduce your client-side complexity by writing your Node.js code event-driven in the cloud. So this is Cloud Functions for Firebase. It's a feature that just launched. So really dramatically changes things in the Firebase world uh, without the need for spinning up servers. So there's a talk here later today about that. So today I was hoping to show you a release candidate, but we didn't quite get it ready in time. Um, so here's actually the link to the proposal. We have uh, a ticket, 854, and you can check that out, you can chime in. If anyone's using Angular Fire, we'd really love you to jump in there, uh, give us some feedback. And that's what I have for you today.